Welcome back to the shop. Today, we have something pretty exciting. We have a Simpson 360 meter. Now, this is a pretty obscure meter. I, I guess I would say obscure. Because it's the digital version of the long-loved and venerable six Simpson 260 meter. Now, I have a version of the 260 here. Uh, this is an analog meter that is just loved the world over. So, what the 360 is, is kind of a digital, modernized version of the 260. So, we got this thing super cheap, with the standard caveat of, it doesn't work. So, let's get into it. Um... It's got some engravings on it and whatever, but uh, that's the standard for older odor kit. Let's get this apart. Now this meter runs off of NICAD batteries, nickel cadmium batteries, and it actually has a charger built in, and they use a, I believe it's a quarter inch stereo audio jack to charge with. Maybe more on that later if we can get the meter to work. But they talk about the uh, charging adapter here on the uh, on the cover. The first thing we got this thing a few red flags. Uh, it's missing the, missing the fuses. There you can see, taken out completely. So it's a little concerning. I don't know why the fuses would be taken out, other than something horrible has happened, or somebody needed the fuses for another one. Now this was part of. Uh, Votex system I believe at one point in its life and it has a number three on it so I'm optimistic that maybe one or two uh, had the fuses blown and they took them out of three in the attempt to save number three and they didn't use it I don't know we're gonna find out so hunting down the fuses was a little fun so this type of fuse is not exactly your standard glass cartridge fuse. There are quite a few different kinds. And maybe we'll go into some of that a little bit later in another video. But for now, all we need to know is these are the fuses we need to get it going. So I did a bunch of research and we need a half amp fuse, which is what we have here. And we need a 16th amp fuse, which is what we have here. So these fuses aren't exactly the same as your standard fuse. Uh, they're a little bit kind of in between. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install our... Let me hold it so you can see it. We're going to go ahead and install our half amp fuse right here where it says. And... I really wanted to make sure I had the correct fuses because it protects the meter. You know, you could jam any fuse in here you want and probably get something to work. But if you don't have a half amp and a sixteenth amp fuse in the blow in the um, duration that they're supposed to trip the sizing, that's not what this tool is designed to have in it. So yes, you can substitute fuses technically, but it's not what it was designed to have. So now we got fuses in it and we also have the NICAD batteries now they do say in the manual that you can emergency use the wrong batteries ie you know normal uh, alkaline batteries but they really strongly suggest using NICADs so I got these Tenergy NICADs and we're gonna put these in I don't know how good they're charged if we get nothing here, I guess we'll have to charge some batteries. But I'm just feeling my way through here, and we're going to see if we can get this going. I think we need to split the difference. Get that. Like this the camera is in my way. Give me a second. Got the first row in. Let's get the second row in. Actually, let's make sure the meter's off before we do any damage. And the meter is indeed in the off position. We'll get more into the controls of this soon, hopefully. Okay, get that meter, that 
battery there and the last battery right there. Now we're going to forgo putting the cover back on just in case we have to remove the batteries quickly. So, batteries are in it. Here's the moment I've all been waiting for. Well, that is a very good sign. We've got signs of life. So that's exciting. So now, decimal points moving. It's doing things that it's supposed to be doing. I like that. Scales are changing. And these meters are just super cool. Vintage meters are fun to play around with. You don't see me really use them in videos much, but they really are a lot of fun. Um, let's just go to the 200 DC scale. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get um, some meter leads and put them in here. And we're gonna get our Fluke 87 out and we're gonna get our Milwaukee M18 powered power supply out and we are going to see if we can test our meters we're gonna see if we can compare everything so let me see if I can get all of this stuff in frame and we'll go from there now, on meter leads, I was so excited, I actually bought new old stock Simpson meter leads for this meter. So let me get these open, and we'll take a look at them. So here we are. Here's our meter leads, fresh out of the pack. And you'll notice when you compare the Fluke to the Simpson. Now, the Simpsons will loosely go into the Fluke. And what they did as meters went on in time was they insulated the banana jacks. And this is called a banana jack because of the way that it is. It kind of looks like a banana. So you can see they insulated them where this one is bare and this one has a collar over it. This one's insulated, this one's not. And these just plug into the meter here just like that. And they go in, the positive ones the same way. You'll see it just goes right in. I'm going to put it back like that. And we'll untangle our leads. These leads are nice and soft, very flexible, good quality. The plastic is, is nice, have tip protectors on them. Get them off. Here's your tips, just like that. I think we're going to take advantage of our accessories here for these meter leads. They come with these alligator clamps that you just thread onto the meter the leads just like that. And that just threads onto the screw right here. Just like that. Which is kind of nice the Fluke 87 leads have this detent that they kind of clip onto. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip the Simpson 360 leads, if I can, onto the Fluke 87 leads, like this. And then we'll clip the power supply onto that bare spot there. So everything will be at the same point of potential. All right, so we have some meters hooked up. What we have is all three connections made up. You can see here, here's our power supply, our Fluke 87, and our Simpson 360. We have both sets of leads set up like that. Let me try and get the, uh, the 87 turned so you can hold your head just the right way and catch the glare. Have everything on volts DC. Now, these older meters, um, and some newer ones for that matter, 
you need to be in the right scale. So we're in the 20 volt scale, and as we increase our power supply, we're going to have to change that. And I'll show you why we want to be in the lower, well, you always want to start out in the higher volt scale. But I know I have my power supply set. So the power supply says it's putting out 0.6 volts. And the Fluke 87 and the Simpson 360, very, very close. You see, we're, we're reading 0.58, and here we're dancing between 0.579 and 0.580. The 360 does not have the resolution there. Let's go to, we are below 2 volts. The next scale is 2 volts. So let's go to 2 volt scale. So here we don't agree exactly, but we're darn close, 0.575. And here we're at 0.8. So let's bring this voltage up a little bit. Let me go to here. And we'll just turn it up a tenth at a time. 0.681. So you can see the scales are getting closer as the voltage goes up. one volt the resolution is pretty close here so I don't this has a slower refresh rate than the Fluke 87 that's for sure now this is before the true RMS and all that other stuff and you can have you can also see the analog meter in here is, is slowly going up as I do this as well point one two 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, or 1.7, still going up. Now we're getting to the point where we want to switch scales because we're getting close to 2 volts. So we'll switch scales. You'll see our decimal point moved, and we have done some some ra ranging up so this is 1.818 when I go to the 20 volt scale you'll see it's 1.82 because it was 18 1.825 so I believe it's rounded up a little it's still very close so let's keep going up fluke 87 is auto ranging we don't have to worry about this so now we're above 2 volts We'll just keep going up here, get to 2.5, and we will change over to that, and we'll go up a volt at a time now, 3.5, 3.52, 3.52, very close with each other, 4.52, they're agreeing. 5.53. Now here you can see this is probably doing some rounding up because we're 5.528, 5.3, 3, sorry. 6.53, same thing. Ten volts. And I'll just keep nudging these up till we get to the top end of our scale again. We'll get to about 18 volts and we're going to go up to the 200 volt scale. Okay, so here we are at 18.54. 8 we're going to go up to the 200 volt scale. So now you can see the resolution has gone down. It's 8.18.1. We're here, we're 18.5, so the, the accuracy of the meter, you want to be in the lowest scale possible to be as accurate as possible. So if we, But you always want to start out on the highest scale, so if you have an unknown voltage source, you want to start at the 1000 volt scale, and you'd be like, oh, okay, it's 15 volts. This is just kind of horseshoes and hand grenades close, 
you know you can safely go to the 20 volt scale. You can see now you're getting closer and now you're getting closer still. So that's how this always works. When you have an unknown voltage source you always start at the highest voltage scale and what it reads you know which scale you can move to. So let's go back to the 200 volt scale and start cranking the voltage up more. And I need to get back to where I need to be. 19.5. So here we can see we're on the lower end of that 200 volt scale. And our, our meters aren't exactly on each other, but they are darn close. And we're going to run out of power supply here. So we'll just crank a power supply up to our full 36 volts. And there you have it. So 36.5 or 36.01 and 35.5. So very close. Either way, this thing is doing metering stuff, which is super exciting. The analog meter is indeed working. So there's a few other tests we could do with this meter. I, to be all fair to the meter, I don't know if my NICAD batteries are properly charged. Um, there's a few factors here. So everything I'm seeing so far, we have a functional meter, which is great news. We got this thing for a good deal on a gamble that it was going to work. So I believe the next video we're going to have on this meter, since we did a successful voltage test here, maybe we'll see if we can get our battery charger working. We'll see if we can build a battery charger, comb the internet and found out some information about that. I was unable to find one, but I think we can make one. So have a few hurdles on that yet, but that's going to probably be the next thing here so we can charge our batteries. And uh, we'll continue playing around with this thing. I love old meters like this. I just am reluctant to use them frequently because of the setup that I have. I don't have a lot of nice place to lay things down that I'm not worried that I'm going to inadvertently damage something. Because these things are made of Bakelite and if they fall, they get broken. So there we go. I hope this was interesting. Uh, playing around with a nice old meter. We got it to work. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns with it. Figured out that it it's accurate, close, at least. So it's worth getting deeper into it. We're going to see what we can do with charging system on an upcoming video. And everything, I'm really pleased with everything. So we got nice new meter leads for it. Um, and everything seems to be working just great. So I hope this was interesting. You always need to be cautious with this stuff. And a best takeaway, if you use a, an older meter like this, Always start on the highest scale and work your way down. So just one final neat thing here. We turned off the power supply and we're just letting it slowly drain off naturally. And we've gotten down to the millivolt scale and you can see the analog meter here slowly, slowly draining down. And the two meters are very close. We're in the finest scale on this meter and I should note that the analog meter goes to the 200 scale and that is an indicator that as your voltage is creeping up you need to change to the next range and also this built-in analog meter will peg violently and probably get destroyed if you're on the wrong scale so just a bunch of things to look out for these older meters do require a little bit more thought. The auto ranging modern meters are a lot more simple. Hook it up and go. But if you like playing around with old stuff, there's some really good meters out there to, to have and use in your shop. Okay. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.